Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because I've been thinking about this video the entire week pretty much. So in case you're wondering, this is not my everyday makeup. I did film a tutorial on this look which is why I'm in full glam. But what better time to talk about confidence than when you're in full glam. Wherever you are, um, I hope that you're in a space that you are comfortable and you can kind of just engage and like absorb what I'm gonna say because I'm just throwing a lot at you. I have prepared points but I don't know exactly where I'm going with this video. Um, but if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I make makeup tutorials, product reviews, and videos about faith, advice, lifestyle, that kind of thing. And this is one of my faith related videos. Um, so thank you so much for watching and subscribing and supporting me. I titled this note, how to have confidence and stop caring what people think. And I have 10 points here. Point number one, is know who you are, but more importantly, know who you want to become. So I'm not so set on the fact of knowing who you are because I honestly think that if you are evolving in this world, if you're moving forward in time, then you're constantly changing. But what I know first and foremost is who I want to become, who I want to become as a wife, who I want to become as a mother one day, who I want to become as a creative, as a follower of Jesus. I know who that person is. And everything else seems to funnel in to the direction and the intention that I feel like God has for my life. So if you're struggling and being confident, something great to hold on to is the knowledge of the person that you want to become. You may not think that you're in the greatest place at the moment. You may be battling with a lot of insecurities. You may be battling with a lot of shyness or, or self-worth. What I want to say to you is that what I found my confidence in is connecting to God and understanding that all confidence comes from God and that's what inspires the person that I want to become. Know who you want to become and I promise you it will become like a tunnel and it's a great way to set intention for your day and in decision making as well. Is this getting me closer? Is this choice that I'm making getting me closer to the person I want to become or is it putting me further away from this person? That is a great question to ask when you're going through life and day-to-day -day decisions. My next point is have a mission, set goals, and stick to them. So know who you want to become and have a mission are so important. But to accomplish a mission, you have to set your goals. And to set your goals and accomplish them, you have to stick to them. Now, with me, I have goals that are work goals, wife goals, faith goals, and YouTube goals. My biggest struggle on YouTube has been consistency because you know, YouTube has fallen down the list of certain things in my life and I'm trying to just push it back up to be one of the more important things. And I know that consistency is key with growth um, here on this platform, but in your life, consistency in your friendships, consistency in, in your work, like incremental wins and goals happen when we keep doing the same things and getting better at them and coming back to them over and over and over again. Whatever you know that you can do to set these small goals and stick to them, you'll feel so much more confident because you'll be able to accomplish things that you can measure that uh, fit into the margins of your life and that make you feel better about yourself because you're making room and you're ticking off the boxes. And doesn't it feel so great when you just tick off a box and you're like, yeah, I did that, you know? Um, I'm a list person, so I love to make lists. And one of the things that I've found is when I'm planning my day or my week and I make a list and I take things off, I have so much confidence and, and um, I feel so good that I accomplished something. And it may not be the big goal that's been tackled, but it's these small incremental wins that are getting me closer to my, my big vision. So my next point is use affirmations. Now affirmations are something that I used to use a lot more than I do now, but when I first uh, came to Christ, when I first accepted Jesus into my life, I was dealing with a lot of um, lack of confidence because I felt like my life before I accepted Christ and then right as I accepted Christ and those first few months and the first few years were very jarring to me because you know, I didn't want my relationship to Jesus to be this behavioral modification thing, but I do know that when you accept Jesus, that, that things begin to change. You begin to have convictions about certain things that used to be okay to do, and then they're not okay to do anymore. You know, and I would struggle a lot because I was like, man, I'm just not there. I'm not, I'm not perfect, right? But I found confidence in writing little sticky notes and sticking them on my mirror. 
and these were just little things that I could look at and they were just Bible verses that, that I loved. And one of them actually has nothing to do with confidence at all but it was something that would calm me because I get very anxious and the verse is in Philippians 4, I think it's 4 to 6. And it says, do not be anxious, but in every situation, through prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And just like meditating on that made me feel so confident in just knowing that I could just cast my anxiety on God. So find verses that relate to you. Do a Bible search. Find verses that you feel like are going to help you out and stick those everywhere. And that's a great way to, to see confidence by seeing and absorbing the Word of God through your day and through your life and through your week. So point number four is choose who you allow to speak into your life. Now this could kind of be like a big one because you know, there are people who are speaking to your life that you didn't give permission to like have an opinion about your life at all, you know, and sometimes it's very difficult because like if you have a big group of friends or if you speak to a lot of people about your life, um, a lot of people feel like they can just talk back and give you advice. Um, I do not believe in unsolicited advice and I'm at a point where I, I just shut it down. If you're not my husband, my mentor, a close friend who we've actually created a bond that I've allowed you to speak into my life, my pastor, my leaders at church, um, certain people in my family, but not even all people in my family. If you're not those people specifically, I'm like, mm -mm, I don't need to hear it. Like, I, if you don't need to tell me anything because I have a direct phone line to God, the creator of the universe. And if there's anything that I need, I am going to speak to him or speak to people that I trust if I don't have clarity on things. One of the things that I learned when I first came to Christ, and I always feel like I should make a video just about like new believers and just things to look out for, is I had such a hard time knowing who to listen to because I would listen to, to Pinterest to choose my outfit. I listened to the radio to tell me what music I was meant to be listening to. I listened to CNN to tell me how to think about politics. There was just so much information that I was consuming and it was shaping my mind and my opinion and my outlook on things. And really I want my mind to be shaped by the scriptures and confirmed by the people that are in my life. Now this is not always perfect, you know, like I don't always win at this. Sometimes I allow people to speak into my life that actually have no right to or things that people can say, comments on social media, hate on social media. Sometimes like it doesn't necessarily affect me, but sometimes you can stick at the back of your mind and if it's something that you really have an insecurity about, all it does is heighten it. So remember that you can just shut it down and you know the people that love you, that can speak truth into your life, that can be honest with you, that support you, those are the people that you should be listening to. Okay, so my next point is care about people. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. Caring about people more than you care about yourself will make you so much more confident. You're like, what? How does caring about you make me confident about me? Okay, so there's this thing called serving, right? Serving other people. What I found in my experience, and especially in the darkest time of my life, I, when I lost my father to cancer, which was, oh my gosh, maybe four years ago, Okay, so my camera died and I don't know where I stopped off. Like four years ago, I lost my dad and I don't want to get emotional about this because I want this to be a motivational video. Um, but I lost my father to cancer uh, four years ago and it was perhaps the darkest time in my life. No, it was the darkest time in my life. Um, it was extremely difficult. I never lost anybody that was close to me that I really, really knew. No one had died that I was affected by. And it was my dad this time and it was the most excruciating time and I was questioning every single part of my life. I lived here in LA. I didn't know why I was here. I didn't know why I was studying what I was studying. Why I was so far from my family. Like everything I was like, what is the point of this? What is the point of life? And there's this thing called service, right? And what I learned about my life and mourning is that when you begin to take your eyes off yourself, um, it starts to put your pain into perspective. I started to serve at the church. Um, if you don't go to church, serve at a charity, um, serve the person at work, volunteer somewhere, do something to make somebody else's day better. Serving a woman who lived on the street 
made me feel so full and so whole and there was something beautiful because it was such a healthy thing that I was doing that that wholeness carried me through the week. It wasn't a distraction from my pain. It just put my pain into perspective that I realized, you know, my dad may have died, but I still have a roof over my head. And look at this person who doesn't even have a meal. So serve other people and care about people more than you care about yourself. You realize how big your heart is. You realize how much confidence you get because the things that are making you not confident is usually the things that are the wrong things to find confidence and affirmations in because they don't love you back. They cannot love you back. My next point is get out of your comfort zone. I hate this. Like I literally, literally, literally getting, like I hate getting out of my comfort zone. But what I do know is I have this little thing that I, that I like a deal that I made with myself. And I said, if anything makes your heart race and like your palms sweat because you're so scared to do the thing, you have to do the thing. And it's so frustrating because like, I don't have that so much anymore, but sometimes I'll be sitting in a room and someone will suggest something or even ask like, does anyone in the room have a thought on this? And I don't want to speak on the topic and my heart starts racing and I get a little bit sweaty. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have to say something because I, this, I feel like that's like the spirit inside of me telling you, hey, move towards this thing, overcome this thing. And then you'll realize how small it is and how needed you were in that situation. So the next one is start your day off right. So this is the most important thing. My motto is faith doesn't work. It's not my motto, but now it is. Faith doesn't work unless faith works every single day. It is a daily exercise. We have to remember, we have to remember who we are. We have to use affirmations. We have to remind ourselves of our purpose and intention daily. I don't know about you guys, but I'm often super confident in one moment and then I feel like I'm just like a piece of poop the next and it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense and my circumstance hasn't changed but my mind has changed on my outlook of the circumstance. So what I do is I take some time in the morning. It doesn't always happen perfectly and it doesn't always happen in this order but my first thing and something so simple and so practical is to when you wake up usually most people just grab their phone and go straight to Instagram. Now I have the Bible app on my phone but instead of going clicking on my Instagram I grab my Bible app, I read the verse of the day and I meditate on that for a few moments and I pray before my feet hit the bed, I do this. Now I do that unequivocally every single day. This does not count as my quiet time, but it helps me, like it helps me so much set my intention for the day and know and get reminded of the fact of who is gonna control of my life, right? And whether that's prayer, whether that's meditation for you, whether that's journaling in the first five, 10 minutes of your day, this is such a powerful, simple tool that you can do for just five minutes a day and it's going to take the power back so that you're the one that's in control. You set the intention for the day and so you can accomplish and you can tackle everything and your mind is in the right place. Okay, number eight is to course correct. I need to course correct often. Sometimes it's a mental battle and I'm having a bad day and I'm super negative and I need to course correct my mind over and over and over again. By course correcting, I just mean that there's a thing that happens when you start to create new habits to train your brain to think a certain way. The more that you do the new thing, the good thing, the healthy thing, every single time that you fall off it, the quicker you get back onto that path. So what I've noticed for my life is course correcting a lot starts with a mental battle. Sometimes I'll just be going down a spiral of like negative thinking or spiral of anxious thoughts and I recognize them and I hear the thoughts. I hear the thoughts but I don't listen to them and course correcting for me is just having a conviction and a realizing that you can look at something that you're doing that maybe is steering you the wrong direction but because of the awareness that you have because you're conscious of your life you just look at it and you go no 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 this is not the path that I'm trying to go down right now and you can come right back I get so happy when there's something that I used to do that was every day and I realized I only did that once a week and then I only do that once a month and then it's been years since I've dealt with that thing. Number nine, number nine's a little bit of controversial. Um, this is kind of something that's inspired by Gary Vee. If you don't listen to him, listen to him. He curses a lot, he swears like a sailor. So if you can just beep, beep, beep out his swearing, he is so wise 
and has a plethora of knowledge on so many things. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the way he communicates, but I agree with a lot of what he actually says. Gary speaks about this thing about like, you know, getting rid of toxic people in your life, but he talks about these people as the people that don't want you to win. And it could be your mom sometimes. It's kind of hard. It could be your mom, it could be your best friend, it could be your spouse, it could be a sibling. Somebody in your life who gets uncomfortable by you, by you succeeding is who you need to get rid of. And by getting rid of, I do not mean you're going to just not talk to them anymore and like now you don't speak to your mother for the rest of your life. Like that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that you need to create margins and safety if these people are speaking things that aren't actually pushing you forward and know that like listen this is my mom and she loves me but maybe she doesn't actually have the best intention for my life right now hey this is my best friend and maybe she's actually very insecure that i'm succeeding and i'm braver than her and um, she's talking me down because that's what we naturally do as humans we get uncomfortable with people who succeed because all they do is they mirror who we want to be and who we're not and so we start to break them down um, and so it's so important for your own confidence and your own success that you get rid of the toxicity and you are very specific about who you are allowing to speak into your life. Okay, so my last point is you are a human being, not a human doing. Now, my husband says this to me all the time and it's so true. I feel like with social media, with honestly any high demanding job or any human being that finds their worth and worth in what they do. You could be a mum and you find your self-worth in the affirmation from your children. You could be somebody who finds your affirmation from your boss in your workplace. Um, you can be somebody on social media who finds your affirmation with likes and comments and engagement and numbers on social media. Self-worth and confidence does not stem on what you do, but it's who you be, it's who you are. And one of my favorite verses is Jeremiah 1, 5. And I'm going to kind of end with this one. The verse says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I pointed you as a prophet to the nations. I think it is so beautiful and so incredible to know that my little self, my little self, with the billions of people in this world, with the people that came before us that aren't alive anymore, with the people that are going to be born today, tomorrow, and in the future, he knew every single one of us. And that I, before I was even on this earth, could be so important that God thought about me. He had a thought about me. He had a knowledge of who I was before I knew who I was, and he had an intention for my life. That in itself gives me so much confidence and sometimes I just net, I just meditate on this verse going, you know what, I may not be certain who I am right now but God knows me. I may not know the intention for my life but he's appointed me for something. He knows who he set me out to be and I just have to remember who I am and find my confidence in Christ. Imagine. So that is my video about confidence. So guys, thank you so much for sticking through to the end. I hope these tips helped you. Remember, confidence is a journey. It's not something that you're going to necessarily feel every single day. But if your confidence comes from your faith, I think we have to understand that faith is not a feeling. Um, faith is, is a certainty and truth. And truth is never changing. I hope for you and I pray for you that this video has helped you, that this video has changed you, that this video has encouraged you. Um, share this with your friends, anybody in your life that is feeling insecure, that is feeling not confident about something, that needs some kind of encouragement. Um, I hope this blesses you and thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I put out videos weekly. I don't know what my schedule is, but I'm going to figure it out. And when I know, you will know and we will all know. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next video. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And remember, don't let anybody dim your glitter. Bye. <laughs> love you guys.